Growing up in my country in South Africa, playing with boys, we always had adults saying, don't cry. You can't cry, you're a boy. You got to be strong. And I realized as I moved over to the Western world, it's the same connotation. It's just across the board. Boys or men are expected to be strong. Dr. Unati here. Today we're gonna explore a topic that I know it's least uh, discussed. And reason being, we don't see a lot of men presenting to our clinics. Things are improving every day though, I must give them credit. I was looking at the stats of World Health Organization. 264 million people are diagnosed with depression every year. The stats, the latest stats shows that we have 264 million people living with depression. This includes men and women, including children in the stats, right? So today though, I want us to explore extensively what goes through men's mind and also how they present to us because they kind of have a different presentation compared to their counterparts. We're going to talk about how they present and also how to help these symptoms to get better. Depression in men presents a little bit different compared to women. A lot of times it is under, undiagnosed or underdiagnosed. And reason being, a lot of times men, they tend to downplay their symptoms. Two, they tend to come late to present to their doctors because again, it's because of the connotation. Men have to be strong. There is no such. All of us have the amygdala. Amygdala is a little uh, organ or little, little mess in our brain that controls our emotions. We all have it. You understand? So I don't understand where this men or boys can't cry came about because men feel emotions as we do, as women. So today we're gonna explore extensively how they present. A lot of times men present with aggression. Yes, a lot of times when they are stressed, they present with aggression or they become withdrawn or they actually present with a behavior that you might miss because it seems like it's positive. They tend to overwork or they tend to play sports. If those that play sport, they tend to commit themselves playing sport or they tend to spend a lot of time in their offices or doing some work or whatever that would take away from their emotions. And of course, they will still present with the same symptoms women present with, the sadness, the being withdrawn, the suicidal thoughts sometimes, or poor sleep, or sleeping less, or sleeping more, eating less, or eating more. And of course, weight loss sometimes happens, or weight gain happens, being sad, uh, hopelessness, you know, the guilt, and feeling depressed, and sometimes, unfortunately, suicide. The unfortunate thing about men, when they commit suicide or when they attempt suicide, a lot of times it becomes successful because men, they tend to have access to dangerous weapons like guns, you know, or ropes. They tend to be successful when they commit suicide. Compared to women, women tend to use things like overdosing with medication. So those kind of things, sometimes women, they come out of it. Men unfortunately could actually commit suicide successfully. So how do men present really? Do they really come to doctors? A lot of times they come because they say, dog, I have abdominal pain lately, or I have back pain, I've got a lot of headaches. That's usually the time we explore their symptoms. You'll find that there's other more serious symptoms when you explore these headaches. You check their blood pressure, because again, these symptoms could overlap with medical symptoms. You could have headaches because of high blood pressure, right? You could have back pain because of osteoarthritis. So when we explore all these symptoms, and then of course we talk about your mental health, that's when we ex explore and discover that they actually struggling with mental health. How do we help them then? It's the same symptom, symptomatology relief. After exploring symptomatology, we do have scales of looking how severe your depression is. And of course, there's room for everything. A lot of times, some men, they come at a later stage where they would need medication. And that's when a lot of times men refuse to take medication. Remember this, when you've had these symptoms for over two weeks, and like I said, a lot of times men present late in life, either two years later or a year later, or even 10 years, men, they tend to live with these symptoms 
sometimes they even hide them from their spouses or from their parents right because there's that mentality of i can be strong i'm a man i can do it and honestly these symptoms or maybe this mentality of being strong it comes from a place of studies show there's a lot of the experiences men experience or our biochemical differences in our brain there's state studies that show that there is some differences and of course men's brain are larger than women so there's other biochemical structural uh, contributions towards this mentality but again like I said we all have amygdala amygdala is our emotion center in our brain men and women have it right we experience same emotions right so honestly the cultural thoughts of you could be strong you could push guys we need to actually read ourselves from that because today a lot of times families are losing their sons their husbands they are, they are fathers because of this mentality. Like I said, men could see their doctors or could see their psychologists, their counselors, and depression is assessed after two weeks of these symptoms. Obviously, depression is diagnosed. You might either need medication or you might just benefit from psychologist uh, intervention. Like, basically, you go through therapy and of course sometimes it comes at a point where it becomes more complicated there's even spousal uh, conflicts so interpersonal therapy or family therapy kicks in so those are the things that we help men deal with the depression and a lot of times the other thing I need to mention here a lot of times men or children male children that experience adverse childhood experiences they tend to experience depression at a higher risk than the uh, other kids that never experienced trauma, right? So in closure, listen to your emotions, listen to your body when it's telling you, because our bodies are great when it comes to being equilibria, in equilibrium or off equilibrium. Learn to listen and don't downplay your symptoms. Don't downplay your symptoms because depression is treatable. We treat depression for a minimum period of six months or longer if you need more. And actually, there is no shame in treating depression. One, there's different types of medications you can choose from. There's different types of um, um, pills that would work for your system. And of course, depending on other conditions you have. So there's no fear in that. Depression is treatable. And like I said, it's treatable for six months or longer if you need to be treated longer. So I would like to hear your, uh, your thoughts here and also just to reassure our brothers there. It has nothing to do with being weak. It has something to do with being in touch with your inner world. It has something to do with improving your inner world because we are put in this world to be happy and save our peoples. We all want to be here and be happy and save the people we live with, our families. So we basically owe that to them. And of course, we owe that to us to live a healthy life. And of course, we also have non-medical uh, medication uh, approaches meditation meditation has been found to help depression mindfulness meditation basically exercise and also eating healthy sleeping well drinking enough water because a lot of times people with depression men specifically they present to us because there's drug abuse there's alcohol abuse so rehab is also part of medication so you guys take care and i wish you all the best in these hard times take care